And let's now move our attention to a groundbreaking development in the battle against malaria. Malaria, obviously a disease that has plagued the world, plagued the human species for a long, long time and still creating havoc in many parts of the world, especially Africa. Now, the World Health Organization has just given its stamp of approval to the R21 matrix malaria vaccine, making it possibly a crucial milestone in the battle against malaria. And interestingly, this is a vaccine that may well be developed uh, you know, between the Serum Institute and the uh, and Oxford University acting in partnership once again, as happened with COVID Shield. So what is this new vaccine and what could its implication be? Before I talk to the experts, here's a look at the new vaccine and what it means. A new affordable malaria vaccine that can be produced on a large scale has been hailed as a breakthrough by the World Health Organization. The R21 Matrix Malaria Vaccine, developed jointly by the University of Oxford and the Serum Institute of India, received the WHO nod this week after meeting the required safety and quality standards. The world's biggest vaccine manufacturer, India's Serum Institute, has agreed to produce 100 million doses a year and will double its manufacturing capability in the next two years. Here's why this vaccine can be a game changer. Malaria has been causing untold human suffering for millennia. The parasitic infection is caused by mosquitoes that can affect the brain and respiratory system and turn life-threatening if not promptly treated. Globally, it led to 247 million cases and around 619,000 deaths in 2021, an increase from 245 million in 2020. Africa is the worst affected. The infection kills half a million people in Africa every year, mostly under the age of five, which accounts for 95% of global malaria cases. We still have a major challenge with malaria with over 220 million cases and around 600,000 deaths a year. And those are a uh, majority of those are occurring in children under the age of five in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, we already have one uh, licensed malaria vaccine, and that has been implemented in three countries so far and is starting to be rolled out next year in, in several others. One of the challenges has been the supply of that particular vaccine. So having a second vaccine available with similarly high efficacy, um, but also that has um, available supply and is priced to level that makes it a cost effective intervention, is really going to have a dramatic impact in sub-Saharan Africa. But not just Africa. The WHO Southeast Asia region accounted for about 2% of the burden of malaria cases globally in 2021. Although deaths due to malaria have come down sharply in the last few years, India is also one of the countries badly affected by the infection. According to official figures, in 2021, India reported 79% malaria cases in the region and 83% of all malaria deaths. The Oxford jab is called R21 and requires children to have four doses. Trials run by Oxford University in Burkina Faso, Kenya, Mali and Tanzania prove it's around 75% effective at preventing malaria. Most of the vaccines will be manufactured for high endemic countries in Africa and their rollout is expected to begin by mid-2024. But the big advantage of this jab is its cost. The doses would cost between two and four dollars. Today, it gives me great pleasure to announce that WHO is recommending a second vaccine called R21 Matrix M to prevent malaria in children at risk of the disease. In areas with seasonal transmission, it reduced symptomatic cases of malaria by 75% in the 12 months following a three dose series of the vaccine. At a cost of between two and four US dollars a dose, it's comparable with other recommended malaria interventions and other childhood vaccines. As a malaria researcher, I used to dream of the day when we would have a safe and effective vaccine against malaria. Now we have two. Why has it taken so long to develop a vaccine against malaria? R21 is only the second vaccine against the deadly disease. People have been trying to make malaria vaccines for over 100 years, but the complexity of the malaria-causing parasites' life cycle and their ability to hide within human cells to evade the immune system has prolonged the development of an effective jab. Oh, 
It's only last year that the WHO formally endorsed RTSS or Moscerix, the world's first vaccine, a result of over 30 years of research and development. But its efficacy is modest and the hunt for newer vaccines continues. Despite decades of research and over 20 clinical trial candidates, mosquito nets remain the most effective prevention method in the fight against deadly malaria. But who better to now try and understand this entire new vaccine from than Dr. Nina Belecha, who's the former regional advisor of malaria at the World Health Organization and also former director ICMR at the National Institute of Malaria Research. So, Dr. Belecha, you probably you know more about this than just about anybody else. So, tell us how important is this new vaccine? It's been called a breakthrough. Um, is it a real breakthrough, you think? Thank you, Vikram, for having me on the show. Yes, as you rightly said, this is a breakthrough because we have been having good tools to control and prevent malaria, like uh, good diagnosis tools and treatment, and also preventive tools like uh, bed nets and uh, you know insecticides. But still, we are we have been seeing more than half a million deaths uh, of children in Africa region due to malaria. And also, uh, according to World Malaria Report in 2021, more than 600,000 deaths were reported in the globe, and 96% of them were from Africa. So therefore, it, we needed other tools, additional tools. And we already have one vaccine, which was approved in 2021. And But the demand and supply gap has been huge. So now with availability of this new vaccine, the I think there will be a lot of decrease in the gap between the demand and supply. And also we will see that the number of deaths of these young children will definitely be reduced and it will have a great public health impact. So the first vaccine that was produced, Mosquitrix, uh, which has been out for a couple of years, how, from the reports that you are seeing, what is the efficacy of the new vaccine compared to the earlier one? Actually, there has not been any head-to-head -head comparison as such between the two vaccines. But generally, it is uh, seen that the, both the vaccines are equally safe and effective. And for the present uh, vaccine, the phase three trials, which were conducted in more than 4,800 children in Africa, the efficacy of 75% has been seen to prevent the disease. And this has been seen with, by using four doses, three primary doses with one month interval and later a booster after one year. And this has been used in the age group of five month to 36 months now these are of course vaccines right so uh, we've seen there is always some hesitancy about vaccines in some part of the world luckily a lot less in india and africa than in some countries of the west do you think it'll be easy to get these vaccines out to the mass population so that a you know major battle is won against uh, against malaria I think so, because the experience of using the earlier vaccine has shown, and it was a WHO coordinated implementation program in three countries, uh, in Ghana, Malawi, and Kenya, and the uptake was very good. And even it was seen that even during COVID-19, the implementation program went well. You know, when there is uh, so much mortality due to disease, uh, the acceptability is definitely better. And then, of course, there is a need of advocacy and, you know, educating people uh, so that they, they can. And along with if it is done along with the other immunization program, which is actually uh, what is being visualized, then definitely the take up would be better because people do get their children uh, below five vaccinated for other diseases. And of course, this entire partnership between Oxford University and Serum Institute We've already seen its impact during, with, with COVID Shield. So to that extent, it's a partnership that is tried and tested. Yes. All right. Ma'am, if you could just talk to us about the battle against malaria. It, what is thousands of years, maybe tens of thousands of years that humans have been battling the mosquito. Why has it been so difficult to actually eradicate malaria? We've eradicated other diseases, but not malaria. What, what's the problem? 
So it's not that we have not been successful with malaria. Many countries have already eliminated malaria. I mean, when we say it is not eradication that it hasn't gone from the earth, but there are in particular countries, there is zero malaria indigenous transmission. This has happened. But uh, I mean, except Africa, where the transmission has been so high. So there are many factors. You know, it is, it is a disease of tropical and subtropical regions, the climate factors, the mosquitogenic conditions, and the presence of vector. Here, there are two hosts. One is vector and one is human host. So the presence of vectors, and in some areas like Africa, the vector is very efficient vector. We say it can transmit disease uh, very, very efficiently. So all these factors, and along with that, there have been, uh, you know, the technical issues like drug resistance, insecticide resistance, because the insecticides which are used in bed nets also, resistance to them also develop. And then, of course, the implementation of these measures, as well as, you know, as I said, disease, this is the disease of poor. So the sometimes the access to those areas for implementation of various measures where these people live, where the malaria is seen more, the access becomes very difficult. So all these factors have, have led to presence of malaria, but definitely in, in like Southeast Asia region has done well. There has been a lot of uh, quite a substantial decrease in malaria over time. Even in India, the, uh, there has been a uh, decrease in malaria. But definitely, yes, the targets of elimin malaria elimination, which have been set in many regions like 2030, I mean, definitely for that one has to accelerate uh, many uh, efforts like prevention and good management using new tools as they are available because this is a dynamic process and we can't do with business as usual. And then one more important fact, Vikram, I would like to say that whether it is a country or within the country, the malaria is situation is very different. Even with not even states, like if we talk in India, between districts, the situation is different. So the programs have to see what measures would be effective at local level. And again, as I would like to say again, WHO says one size does not fit all. So one has to see which measures would be best for a particular area so that we can judiciously, effectively, and economically use those methods. Then we need to have better surveillance, strengthen our primary healthcare system. And of course, these tools as they develop, they need to be adapted after debating because WHO issues uh, recommendations and gives guidance, but the countries have to debate within their country according to their system and regulatory practices to use those new tools as they are available. So definitely we need to accelerate our efforts if we want to eliminate malaria. And in areas like Africa, where there is such a high burden, Definitely to decrease mortality is the first priority there. So we need to use vaccines at all available. I mean, the vaccines need to be used with all available tools or interventions at present. All right, Dr. Vadecha, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Vikram.